Hi guys, welcome back. Um, over the last couple of videos, we've been looking at CSS units, and so far we've looked at the difference between absolute and relative units, and learned how to use pixels, percentages, ems, and rems. In this video, we're going to concentrate on viewport units, and we're gonna look at VW, VH, Vmin, and Vmax units, one by one, and these stand for viewport width, viewport height, the viewport minimum unit and the viewport maximum unit. These are all fairly simple to grasp, so let's get started. So first we can define the viewport as the screen the user is viewing your web page on. It is the visible dimensions of the browser window in which your web page will display. Viewport units then are those that take their size relative to the viewport. All viewport units take numbers between one and 100 as values, and the VW unit is calculated relative to the viewport's width. 100 VW means 100% of the width of the viewport, one VW is 1% of the viewport width, and 50 VW is 50% of the viewport width, and so on. However wide or narrow the viewport is, we slice it up into 100 parts and each one of those 100 parts corresponds to one VW. Therefore, if the viewport is 800 pixels wide, then one VW equals eight pixels. If the viewport width changes, let's say we drag the browser window around, the values of what one VW is changes along with the width. So. In this code pen, we have this heading and paragraph. The H1 heading has a font size of 8VW and the paragraph has a font size of 1.8VW. When I drag the window around, the font size of both the paragraph and the H1 adjusts automatically relative to the width of the viewport. This is because the value of what one viewport unit is changes as the viewport changes. So 8VW here is bigger than 8VW here. We can check this if we open the Chrome console. In the CSS panel, we can click on computed and if I select the H1, it will show us how the browser is computing the eight viewport width font size in pixels. As we adjust the browser window, you see the font size recalculates. The wider the viewport, the larger the font size. Viewport height is calculated by dividing the viewport's height by 100. Whatever the height of the viewport, it will always be split into 100 VH units. So if the viewport is 1200 pixels in height, then one VH will be 12 pixels. When the viewport height changes, the value of what one VH is changes along with it. A common use of VH is for sizing the sections of a web page, exactly as I have here in this code pen with this header. I have it set to 90 VH, but it could be 100 VH for a header that entirely covers the viewport. And you do see that on modern sites where the whole header is all that's on the screen to begin with when a user visits. Our 90 VH means that whatever the viewport height, this header will always be 90% of it. If I drag this code pen console window up, we change the height of the viewport, our header is always 90 VH of the available height. With tall sections like this, we can also end up with all this empty space on viewports that are taller than wide, like mobile phones. So what we might do is use a media query to actually reorient the whole header into a column layout at this width and probably lose the image as well. If you already had a single column rather than the two I have here, a better option might be to use the vmin unit here on the header. One vmin is one one hundredth of whatever is the lesser of the viewport's width or height. So it's looking for the smallest dimension of the viewport. Using VH is fine, usually on desktops, where there's more width than height, so your header will always look something like this if you were using the VH unit. The height of the viewport on a desktop is always going to stay consistent. The Vmin gives us this also, as we can see, but on mobile devices or narrower viewports, you get 90% of the width 
given to the height of the header. So as soon as height is greater than width, that vmin unit kicks in and resizes so we don't get all that negative space. It's very effective if we just had a single column inside a header, as I said. Um, we'd need to sort out the text sizing of, as well, of course. So vmin works out which is smaller between height and width. When we drag, we can see exactly where this kicks in. When the width is smaller, it is the new viewport minimum, and the header takes 90% of that width as a measurement and gives it as the height of this header. So a viewport that is 700 pixels wide by 900 pixels tall, one vmin is equal to seven pixels, one one hundredth of the width. We see it here too with the image on a wide viewport the image's width is 40% of the viewport height. This is usually constant on a desktop and is usually the smaller of height and width. If we adjust the height we see the image get smaller. Alternatively if we shrink the viewport so it is taller than it is wide the image takes its measurement from the viewport width and scales with the rest of the header. The opposite to vmin is vmax and it kind of works in reverse of what we've just seen with vmin. The vmax unit is 1 one hundredth of the viewport's width or height, whichever is greater, so it's always looking for whatever is the biggest out of height and width. A viewport that is 1000 pixels wide by 650 pixels in height, one vmax is going to be equal to 10 pixels. I find one really good application of VMAX units is to set a minimum height of an element, particularly on tall, narrow screens. If I bring back in our media query, which removes the image from our call to action header and reorients the content to a single column of center text, we see on the header itself, we have set a minimum of 70 VMAX. This equates to screens below 600 pixels in width, setting a height to the header of 70% of the larger of the two dimensions, which is height in this case. Okay, so that's been viewport units, which give us a very different way of measuring things in CSS. They give us ultra responsive units, which uh, represent a percentage of the viewport as a whole. So we don't need to think about setting uh, percentages of parent elements if we're in a deeply nested element. We've seen how viewport units set themselves on uh, as some percentage of the width or height of the viewport. VW units are great for setting uh, headings in particular to scale to some percentage of the width of the viewport so you get consistency in how they appear across devices of all widths. VH units are great for sizing sections of a page. We can assign a given amount of screen real estate to a header as we've seen here or uh, an image gallery or a contact form and so on and have that scale consistently on all devices. Vmin and Vmax units allow us to look for uh, whichever is the larger dimension of the browser and make decisions based on that, setting minimum and maximum heights of elements, for example. An interesting but perhaps uh, not useful fact that I don't think I mentioned about these units is that they are not bound to their own axes. For example, you can declare a width of 25 uh, viewport height to make an element as wide as one quarter of the height of the viewport and a height of say 50 VW makes an element half um, of the width in height. As of the time of recording, viewport units are supported by all browsers except Opera Mini, um, plus the odd exception that VMAX is not supported in Microsoft browsers up to Edge 15. Okay, so thanks for watching. Um, in the next video, we'll start looking at text and fonts in CSS. Uh, we'll look at font types and stacks, font sizing, the uh, various text properties and font descriptors, and we'll look at using and optimizing Google Fonts, and we'll look at wrapping and hyphenation and whatever else we can fit into a video of reasonable length. So thanks for watching. I do appreciate your time, and I'll see you in the next one.